Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Chill Survival Series. Today we're going to build a lava farm and super smelter so we can more easily cook food and smelt resources. We have a lot of work ahead of us today, so let's get started. I would say within the past while, we have made some really significant changes to the base. We've got a good supply of iron, we've got ourselves some really good trades set up for emeralds, and honestly this place has just transformed so much. It really only feels like yesterday where all we had was that starter house and the barn for our animals. Alright, alright, I'm getting a little bit too nostalgic here. I've gotta reel it in a little bit. First of all, cut, cut the nice music. I'm here to critique this base. Wow, look at these rails just here and never cleaned up. So messy. Also, what's this? Only two furnaces and I have to manually put the coal and resources in myself? Get with the times, Drift. For real though, I think it's finally time that I build a super smelter and lava farm. Pretty much any time I start a new project on this base, I end up having to go into the caves and grab a bunch of coal. And that just ends up getting depleted so quickly because I'm also using it for things like torches. So I figured it's finally time to use lava as our main fuel source. That way we have an unlimited supply. But I also kind of figured that if we're going to go ahead and build that today, we might as well build an auto smelter as well. That way the whole process is just easy from start to finish. Also, where's the coal at now? Have I really taken every last bit here? You know what? No, it's not even worth it. It's not even worth it. Oh, hello, sir. Good evening. Oh, there's another one. What's going on? They're all stuck down here. Wait, now I'm stuck down here too. How do I get out? I don't remember. Well, I guess I just dig myself out. That's embarrassing. Well, with the project idea sorted out, now we gotta figure out where we're gonna put this thing. So it's most definitely gonna go around here where all of our other industrial stuff is. But where do I put it amongst this area? Ooh, a lot of this needs some terraforming too. Do I terraform some of it first so I can get a better picture of where everything's gonna go? Or do I be lazy and just terraform what I need to terraform? All right, let's free cam this. Honestly, I can't even visualize where I wanna put this thing yet. So I'm maybe leaning towards terraforming some of this space up and then hopefully an idea will come to me for where I wanna place this. Can you tell that build placement kind of stresses me out? I'm always worried I'm gonna get the placement wrong and it's just gonna throw off the vibe of the entire area. But I also think I need to just stop overthinking things, I think. All right, and good thing we have tons of dirt and grass because we have a lot of dirt to place. And just like that, I'm out of dirt. I think I've got a little bit left in my storage. Yes, I still have some. It's not that much, but I mean, it'll do. Oh, wait, I know one more spot where I might have a little bit extra. I recently built this sawmill for our tree farm. This build was done over the course of a couple streams and the VODs are in the live tab if you wanna check them out. So basically it's just a little log mill where you got like the saw blade where the wood gets cut. We've got some excess overstock right here. And inside we've got all of the tree saplings that are growing. And upstairs we have a living space. Just a cute little cozy spot. Oh, and most importantly, I found this donkey in the forest and he was floating. So I ended up calling him Ghost Donkey because I mean, ghosts float around, so it makes sense. But also if he's a ghost, is he even real then? Ghost Donkey, are you here? Well, let me know in the comments if you think Ghost Donkey is a figment of my imagination. I guess I should probably look for what I came here for. And dirt, I mean, I got a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Oh, here we go, jackpot. I mean, I'll probably end up needing more than this, but hey, I'll take what I can get. There we go, it's all terraformed and ready to go. So now I just have the task of figuring out where I'm gonna place this. And I'm still lost. I don't know what to do. Maybe free cam will help me. So this build is gonna have to be a little bit bigger because we have a lava farm and a super smelter going in it. However, I think it could probably go anywhere. I'm almost inclined to put it over here by the blacksmith, just to keep these two in theme with one another. Plus, if I build it around here, there'll be some nice sight lines from around the rest of the base. You'll kind of be able to see the build through all of these other ones. Well, with that all done and sorted, I just need to see what resources I have to build with. All right, what do we got? What do we got? So we got lots of andesite, not bad. I always use that. Ooh, we have lots of stone bricks as well. That could be good for the foundation. That will also keep it in theme with the blacksmith we have. 
Hear me out. Birch log with some diorite and possibly some calcite. So we could use this for the foundation and then the calcite, birch, and polished diorite for the top of the build. Now the diorite and calcite is a pretty central theme running through our builds, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. It kind of helps make this area look more cohesive. And honestly, the main difference between these two builds are the roofs. The shape and also the palette give them completely different styles. So we can definitely make this work as long as we incorporate some different blocks into it, which means we're probably going to want something with a lot more contrast. How about deep slate? That could be what we're looking for. Pop this down, this down, and of course we can't forget the spruce. Ooh, yeah, I think that's nice. The vibe is a little bit colder than these builds, but I think that's a good thing. It'll provide some nice contrast to this area. All right, with this palette all sorted out, I think I just need to start collecting some resources. Cause yeah, surprise, surprise, I'm pretty much out of all of them. And I think I'm gonna start off with the deep slate. That way I can just hang out in my strip mine and hopefully find some diamonds. Honestly, with my luck, I probably won't though. So it's a dream. All right, let's start gathering up this deep slate. Whoa, -ho -ho. look at that. 10, oh yes, that's awesome. Well, that's a nice little bonus to resource collecting. Plus I think I've got more than enough deep slate for this project. So hey, that worked out pretty well. Although I think I killed the vibe of the strip mine by extending it. It looks so cool here and so, so sad right there. Oh, that's another problem for another day because I have other stuff to do. All right, deep slate, check. Step two, chop down some birch trees. Oh yeah, I kind of forgot I had a whole birch forest next to me. I'm not always the most observant. Well, this makes my life easier. And I think that should do it for birch. Oh, there's bees flying around this field. Oh, they love the flowers too. What's up, homie? You enjoying the little flowers I put out? Wow, I really need to walk down this path more. It is bountiful with nature. All right, you know I gotta collect some of this spruce. And it's a good thing I have this little tree farm. And I think that should be more than enough spruce. I mean, I hope. I go through an absurd amount of spruce. I mean, now that I look at all my builds, it's uh definitely a me problem, isn't it? All right, I think we got all of the wood that we're gonna need for this build. So the final piece of this puzzle is just a little bit more stone for the foundation. And then we should be good to go. Down into these caves one last time. It's probably not gonna be the last time. I'm sure I'm gonna keep coming down here for some reason or another. I'm just being very dramatic. Well, we got a fresh new morning and the perfect spot for a build. So let's get to work on building this up after I clean up this mess I left behind. All right, let's kick this off by putting up some beams. Ow. Then let's go ahead and strip them. And now let's get some walls up. All right, the bottom floor walls are up and I would say this is looking pretty good. And it's a good thing they're all up because I'm pretty close to running out of these bricks. And I don't have a silk touch pickaxe yet. Plus I'm building the thing that would smelt the stone for the bricks. So yeah, I would say I got pretty lucky with that. All right, let's get our second floor put up. And in between the beams on this floor, we're gonna go with the diorite, calcite and birch combo. Trust in the birch log, okay? Cause it actually looks really good. All right, the palette's looking great, but the shape is looking kind of flat still. I think I need to add something to this to make it stand out a little bit more. First of all, what if we did like a little double door situation between these beams? Something like this. Then I can bring back the wall here so it's kind of asymmetrical. So this will be the entrance into the bottom floor. And with that, I think I could probably swing making a little bit of an extension here. This should help bring in that much needed shape that we're missing. So let's get some support beams coming out like this. And we'll close that off with a trim across the bottom as well. Then we'll just toss up the walls and it'll be all good. Yeah, that's so much better. It was just looking a little bit too flat before. Now we just gotta slap this roof up and we're good to go. Let's get a nice spruce trim along the bottom. 
And then we'll toss up all of this deep slate. Now I don't want this thing going too high, so I'm going classic roof shape. Ooh, very nice, very nice indeed. This part is a little bit awkward right here because we have nothing that's kind of attaching to this deep slate piece. Even a slab would probably be a little bit too thick. So I'm kind of thinking, what if we did some trap doors? Pop one here, pop one here. And yeah, I think that's perfect. And as for the trim on top, let's close it off with some spruce. This should kind of help with the visual weight of the spruce at the bottom and bring it up to the top. So it's kind of like sandwiching the deep slate, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's looking really good. Now, the very last thing that we have to do is fill in these little gaps over here, and then we're pretty much done with the structure. There we go. Now it's officially done, and this is looking really good. Now, there's two things I can do moving forward. I could decorate the exterior, which, of course, is always fun, or I can finally build out our super smelting area. I think I want to put the decorating on pause for a bit and figure out how to work the super smelter into this space. Plus, it'd probably be wise to get the working components up and running so we can actually use them. First things first, we got to get a nicer floor in here. Oh, I kind of forgot I left a pit under here while I was terraforming. You know what? This might actually come in handy because we need to build our lava farm. And I was kind of thinking about putting it in a basement. Wow, look at past me being so proactive. I think super smelters might require a little bit more height than this. So I think bringing the floor down by one block should probably help with that. Plus, I think it'll look cooler too. Disregard the floating beams because honestly, I'll probably just cover these up. I think this space is looking pretty cool. So the first couple things that we're gonna need is quite a bit of iron because we're gonna be using a lot of hoppers. It's a good thing we've got this very well-functioning iron farm and we've got a lot of leftover birch so we can make a ton of chests. Honestly, I don't even know how many hoppers I need. I'm just gonna make them all because we can always use them for other projects. All right, we just need a couple last redstone things to get this thing up and running, and then we're pretty much good to go. Oh, and you know, maybe a couple furnaces would be handy as well. I almost forgot those. All right, let's start piecing this thing together. This is actually my first ever attempt at a super smelter, so I'm following along with a tutorial, and I'll be sure to link it in the description so you can all check it out. So the smelter's all built and all I have to do really is test it just to make sure it works. I did end up taking part of this wall out just because I wanted to give myself a little bit more room in here. Otherwise it would have looked a little bit too cramped. So I just have to patch this up and maybe build a lean to or something and it should be good to go. But for now, let's see if this thing actually turns on. Okay, okay, they're moving back and forth as they should. Nothing's caught on fire yet, amazing. Actually, in this case, fire would actually be a good thing, wouldn't it? Let's maybe properly test this thing out and see if it actually lights on fire. Cause yeah, we do need that. Honestly, I'm kind of in need of some food. So let's get ourselves a nice steak cooking. So the coal and or lava goes into here and drops behind into a minecart with a chest. And then we use this minecart here to drop in our resources. And let's turn it on and oh, I mean, it's lighting up. So <gasps> look at that, it's working. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. This is like the air fryer of Minecraft. This is so easy and convenient. How have I not done this before? All right, let's shut these guys off. And then they go into their resting position and it's, it's good to go. All right, well, with my giant air fryer done, I think I should probably patch up the back of this build first and maybe get started on some decorations here. Then I can focus on the lava farm that I'm gonna be putting into the basement. Now, I think the best thing to do is probably carve out a little staircase here and that will wind down into a separate room. Cool. All right, time to fix up the big old mess I made and also make this place sparkle a bit. The little extension's been all patched up and it's like nothing ever happened. You saw nothing. Now I think I can finally get some decorations on this bad boy. The decorations are up and I think this thing is looking so much better. But the last thing that we actually need for this build is something very important. We've got a bunch of smelters in here, so we need a chimney, of course. I'm gonna go for something a little bit more rough looking. And let's complete these by getting our campfires on top. 
And how's that looking? I don't think I've ever used tough and basalt for a chimney stack, but I think that looks really cool actually. Definitely fits the vibe of this build. So with the outside all decorated and ready to go, we do still have to figure out what we're gonna do for this area, as well as get some nicer decorations in the super smelter. However, I say we hold off on that because I think we should get the lava farm started. We've got another entire whole room to figure out, so I think I'd like to get that started and then we can focus on the little details afterwards. Whee! Ugh. My shovel and my tools are not looking so hot. I'm wondering if I can do a couple trades with these villagers just to get the durability up a little bit more. There we go, that should get us by. We don't have too much more to shave off anyway. All right, I dug out a nine by 13 square and honestly, I can't really imagine we're gonna need any more room than this. This leaves us more than enough space for a lava farm. Now, the only problem is I'm pretty much out of deep slate and I think I'd like to decorate that area in this style. So it looks like we've got to make ourselves one more trip to the caves. I knew I'd be going back. Oh no, ow. Ow, ugh, maybe I should have just stuck to the strip mines. All right, let's collect as much as we can so we can get out of here. Alrighty, this should be more than enough. Now get me back up to the surface. Hey man, there's like a zombie over there. If you could do something about it. Oh, he's on it. I'm kind of sorry I burn all of you to a crisp to get iron because you're all really nice to me. Oh no. What have I done? <gasps> I forgot to torch it. Oh, I need to go to bed. I need to go to bed. Oh God, it's fine. Everything's fine. No issues here. Yeah, I totally did this to myself. So upon collecting all that deep slate from the cave, I had a realization. I don't think I have any dripstone to make these lava farms. I see you back there. Yep. I do see you and I'm walking away. The cave underneath me has pretty much been fully explored and I've never seen any signs of dripstone. So I might have to go out and find some. Yeah, it would probably be under deep slate stuff and I don't have anything. Well, that's okay. It just means we have some adventuring to do. And we all know I love a good adventure. That is until I get too scared and I wanna come home. Okay, so I've hit a patch of land and I think it's worth checking out what's around here. Look what I can do. Hup! Just trying to jump and touch that branch, but I couldn't, I'm too short. Never mind. Wait, what about this one? Hup! Did it, swag. Ooh, what's this? Some coal I see. It is most certainly not what I need, but what I desire. Actually, you know what? I need some torches. Oh my gosh, I can't see a thing. Does this lead anywhere promising? Nope, just a dusty little corner. I'm pretty far away from home and I've never explored this area. Now, if I could actually find a cave entrance, that would be helpful. Oh, is that one? Please, please, please. <gasps> yes. Finally, this unfortunately doesn't look to be like a dripstone cave. I think I'm kind of out of luck here. On to the next. This is genuinely more challenging than I thought it would be. I feel like I constantly run into dripstone caves in all of my other worlds. So what gives? Please let there be something in here. Please, please. Ah, why are there so many spiders? Ugh, get away. <gasps> yes, I finally found some. All right, let's grab as much as we can of the dripstone as well as the block. This cave was pretty far away and kind of hard to find. So I don't think we'll be making a trip back here anytime soon. Oh, uh, hello? Why aren't you moving? <laughs> what, what's going on? Oh, oh, oh no, oh no. I need to stop messing around. Everything's coming after me here. All right, 64 and 64 dripstone blocks. I think that is more than enough. Now to get out of this cave. I don't even remember where I came from. I think I'm just gonna dig myself out cause I'm a little lost. Ah, home sweet home. How I've missed it. Except you, Kevin. I haven't missed you one bit. Okay, I'm just kidding. I, I actually missed you a lot. I'll catch you on Thursday for trivia night. All right, buddy? What a great guy. All right, the dripstone is safe and sound in the chest. And now I've just got to figure out how I'm going to decorate this giant dirt box. First things first, I am forbidden from using any type of wood down here. I have done that before around lava and as as you can probably guess, it went horribly wrong. So I think I'm just gonna stick to that deep slate theme that I have upstairs and try to incorporate some details in other ways. This area was a little bit tricky to figure out. I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to design the space, so there was a lot of trial and error involved. So I've made like little quadrants for the lava farms to go in, just to separate things a little bit. Now the one thing is I need lava now. 
So I should probably get some of these farms set up. Now to get these farms going, we are gonna need a ton of cauldrons. And most importantly, we're gonna need some lava, which of course, as you may have guessed, we don't really have any at the moment. I do have a lava pit close by that I found a while back. So I'm gonna go there. Oh, <laughs> this is all I have left. <gasps> I took so much out of it. That's it. Okay, well, I got two. That's fine. That'll be a good enough start for what we need. Jeez, well, I guess it's a good thing we're finally building this farm. Clearly, I've needed it. All right, so the way we're going to set this up is we're going to take this back a little bit more, toss down some tiles. Then I'm going to place the dripstone here, the pointed dripstone there. Right now, it's dripping water, but that's all right. I'm going to place the cauldrons down anyway. Then I'm going to get the trim going across like this. And with that, I'll be able to drop the lava in here. And hopefully with that, yeah, perfect. These ones are starting to drip lava. So it seems to be working perfectly, which is great. So now I just have to do that to fill up the entire room and then we're good to go. I think I better spend the rest of the night repairing my pick though. This thing's getting pretty worn out. Well, hopefully spending some time down here will allow our cauldrons to fill up with some lava because we're gonna need lots to fill the rest of the farm. Pick is fully healed and I think I'm good to go. All right, I gotta focus on getting this thing done because I've got my work cut out for me. So I'm gonna work away on getting the rest of this farm set up. So I managed to get most of this room filled out. There's still a lot of work left to do, but I'm kind of waiting on all of this lava. Two of these cauldrons did finally fill up and I used them to fill in these two other spaces. However, it's going a little bit slower than I thought it would be. So I think I've got to go out on another adventure to find some more lava. That will definitely help speed up this process a bit more. Lava pits are quite common, so we shouldn't really have any trouble finding any around here. Then again, that's what I said about dripstone caves as well, and look how that turned out. I've just got to keep my ears open for that bubbly sound. Maybe if I stop talking, I'll actually hear stuff. <laughs> that's impossible. I never stop. Oh. I hear something. Is it in here? Nope. Now I don't hear it anymore. What? Oh. It's got to be like right here, right? Hello? Is this some cruel joke? Oh, come on. I've got to be like right above it. <gasps> there it is. Perfect. My very own little lava pit. Nice. Ah! Ah! Oh, no. Oh, that could have been so bad. Wow. Yep. That was a little bit crispy, but we made it. We made it. All right. Let's just grab as much lava as we can here. There we go. That should be a good amount for our lava farm. Oh, so now that I'm back after a journey to get a bunch of lava, there's lava in the cauldrons, huh? Why does it always have to be that way? And a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a five. Oh, what's that? I'm out of lava? Well, guess I gotta go over to my lava farm to collect more lava. Now that it's actually working, this thing rocks. All right, all the lava farms are in place and they are going. Look at how much light this is creating too. I don't even think I want to close off these little sections here either, especially because they give off so much ambient light. I'm thinking I just fill it in with some iron bars. As for these floors, I thought it might be kind of cool to somehow incorporate some lava in here. What if instead of the original design I had, I just go all the way around like this with deep slate, then we dump the lava in the bottom, and then we put some glass over top. But in order to make the glass, I need some sand. And oh no, it seems as though I need to cook the sand into glass. Well, I guess I better use my super smelter. All right, let's let her rip. Yes. And for some reason, these ones are not lighting up and I don't understand why. You know what? I think they just got fed into one of these furnaces. That's all right though, because it is producing the glass that we need. So it's all good. All right, let's see how this looks. I mean, it's a square with lava in it. I don't think it's really goofy, actually. I think it's kind of cool. Honestly, I think this room just needs some more details and decorations, and then it'll all come together. Alrighty, and I think we are pretty much all done with the build. So let's take a quick little walkthrough of this thing. Down in here, of course, we've got ourselves the super smelter. Oops, I may have set off one of these trap doors. 
Um, that's actually uh, intentional. Very, very intentional. I just wanted to be able to, you know, air this out just in case. I'm, I'm gonna have to fix that, aren't I? So in the super smelter room, I kept it nice and simple. I just added in some storage units and that's pretty much it. Now, as for our giant lava farm basement, this thing actually turned out a lot cooler than I expected. I didn't really know where I was going with this design. To be honest, I was kind of just winging it. And I actually really like how it turned out. I really love how much ambient light the lava gives off. And I think it was really cool to add lava into the floor as well. I just added in some decorative storage areas to the side here because I had a little bit of space left. So I made it look kind of dungeony with all of these iron bars. I've got copper piping to make it look a little bit more industrial. And of course I had to add just a little pop of color in the corner there with the azalea. I tried my best to hold back on leaves everywhere and just make this look a little bit more industrial for once. And I really like how it turned out. And as for the upstairs living quarters, I basically just wanted to make a cozy spot for me to be able to hang out on this side of the base. Cause we don't actually have a space like that over here. So I've got a spot for my bed tons and tons of storage. I have a little library and uh, yep, as you may have guessed, these are all Twilight books. Got a couple extras in here as well. And I've got a little kitchen area with some storage. And in here I have my mechanical closet, which is honestly a hot mess right now. I've got some furnaces in here in case they break down, some extra bookshelves. And honestly, I just built this place, so I don't know how I've accumulated this mess. Oh, and last but not least, I also extended the path from the blacksmith over here as well. Eventually, I think I'm I'm gonna want this whole area to be paved. However, I think I'm just gonna take it one step at a time for now and only add paths when I'm doing builds. But yeah, I think this thing turned out so nice. I'm really happy with it. So with the build all done, I think we should do one more test on the super smelter just to make sure it works. Honestly, I know it works. I just wanna use it again because it's really fun. Honestly though, I really do need some food. So let's cook up some steaks again. Fellas, hello, hello. I'm sorry. Alrighty, let's scoop up some of our lava, drop that in this chest, fill the minecart with the beef, and let her rip. Look at that. It's a work of art. Truly, truly magnificent. And the best part is it also drops in the empty buckets when it's all done, so I can just easily retrieve them and fill up the lava again. And look at all this steak I'm getting. Well, let's, let's test it out. How's it taste? It's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Well, I think that's going to be it for today's episode. We've now got ourselves a huge lava farm and a super smelter that we can use. That was a very big task, but I'm so happy we got it done. Well, everyone, thank you so much again for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.